Ah, uh, yes. The mysterious rapture. We're going to talk about that today. We'll also get to some comments of the day and we'll hang out. My name is Tom. You're watching the Watchman River channel. And as I do, you guys know, I do it every single day. I remind you, I'm not a prophet. I'm not a pastor. And I'm not even a great teacher. I'm just a dude that loves the Lord. I love talking about the Lord. And I love hanging out with you guys. So get comfortable. Grab yourself something to eat and drink. Maybe you want coffee or tea. Ooh, have some hazelnut coffee and some blini. Or grab whatever you like to eat and drink when you're hanging out with an old friend and a fellow servant of the Lord. Let's get busy. So, yes, let's talk about the mysterious rapture. You know, it's a pre-tribulation rapture. And it's going to happen very soon. Why do I say that? Why I say that because all the signs we were told to look for have all converged. And especially in the last year, but the last few years. They've all converged. All the signs we are told to look for. We got wars and rumors of wars. We got earthquakes in various places. We got AI that's just getting way too smart, way too fast. We got to get out of here soon or that AI is going to like surpass what was talked about in Bible prophecy. And it will not because we will be raptured soon. We've got a, a money world system, like a one world money system. Central bank digital currency forming right before our eyes. There are so many things. We've got them talking about a, a seven-year peace deal involving many nations with their sustainable development goals meeting that's happening in September, Feast of Trumpets time. And, and one thing I got to stress here, when we talk about the rapture, the mysterious rapture, please, all right, we've all shelled out a little bit of money to see those rapture movies in Hollywood's been doing for the last, you know, 20 some odd years. And a few of them were pretty good. I thought the last one with Kevin Sorbo, I thought that one was pretty good. I thought it was probably the best one. I don't think they've yet to make a great movie as far as like a film is, you know, like a great movie. But the last one was pretty good. Um, but I, my point here is like, none of them are going to touch what it's really going to be like when the rapture happens. I think it's going to be way, way more dramatic than any of those movies have shown. You know, way more dramatic. Let's look at a scripture, okay? 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 53. The words of Paul. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Great scriptures, great scriptures. But I always think like, wait, wait, why is Paul saying right in the beginning, behold, I tell you a mystery, which is in the Greek, mysterion, we shall not all sleep. That means die. So Paul's saying we're not all going to die. Some of us are going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye. He's talking to our generation. We're the generation. If you're alive today and you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, you know what he did for you. You believe in his atoning blood and his finished work and you're born again. He's talking to you. He's saying not all of us are going to die. That's us. We're going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye. First, the dead are going to get their new immortal bodies. And then the twinkling of an eye will get ours. And then the rapture, that mysterious rapture will take place. Let's look at the word in Strong's, all right, for mystery. In this verse, it's mysterion. And it says in the Bible, a mystery is not something unknowable. Rather, it is what can only be known through revelation, i.e., because God reveals it. So God revealed that truth to Paul at that time, and that truth is for this generation. How amazing. This should, if you know Jesus, right now, you should stop whatever you're doing and jump up and down a few times, unless you can't. <laughs> this is exciting. And, and I'm really excited because we're talking... So soon, this is going to happen. I'm trying to every day show you guys the reality that this is about to happen. 
You're about to be face to face with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who loves you if you belong to him. He loves everyone. He wants everyone to come to him. He doesn't want anyone to perish, but people will reject him. But if you love him and you know what he did for you, you're going to experience when you're face to face with him, love you've never experienced even, I can't even put it on a scale. It's just not comparable to the love we love each other with. You know, some people say, I'm kind of nervous to be in front of Jesus. Well, if you belong to him, you don't have to be nervous. You're going to just probably, I, I, I don't know this for a fact. I, I'm just guessing we may just fall to his feet. But we're going to feel love we've never felt. And that love is never going to go away. It's eternal. Does that make you want to just jump up and down a couple times? It does me. But my feet are, my neuropathy is so bad. If I jump up and down a couple times, you're going to have to pick me up off the floor. <laughs> my feet are like wood blocks. But that's what we have to look forward to. Getting these new bodies that are going to be made, designed, and tailored for eternity. Jesus is going to take us to the clouds and then take us to heaven. And then we're going to see what these dwelling places or mansions that Jesus has spent 2,000 years making for you. We're going to see what that's like. We're all going to get a dwelling place or a mansion. And Jesus did it. It's going to be far better than any mansion on earth. I don't know what it's like. I don't know if it looks like houses or if it's a... I don't know. I don't know what it is. It could be nothing like what we think of as mansions here on earth. It's a dwelling place. You know, it's a, it's a place... It's, I just can't wait. Just bring it on, Lord. We're ready. But we're worried about people. <clears throat> we're worried about people in our lives. So we got to just occupy until he comes and we got to tell people the good news and we got to tell people about the rapture because I believe right now there's one final little harvest I don't believe there's going to be some huge huge revival I just don't believe it I don't see it in scripture but I think those final ones are being called right now to Jesus I really do that that rapture's coming soon let's look at some news headlines few of them okay Amir Sarfati said on telegram that there are reports in Syria that the Wagner soldiers are being arrested by the Russian army and the Syrian special service. We'll find out as time goes on. Uh, Amir tends to break things early and many times they end up being true and sometimes they end up not being true because he, uh, he gets this breaking news and anybody who shares breaking news, some of the stories I've shared two days later, I'm like, oh man, it was false, you know, but we'll see. Also, he said a rocket, Russian rockets hit a shopping mall yesterday in the city of Kramatorsk, Ukraine, two dead and dozens wounded. And then it says later in the day, the, the Russian attack in Kramatorsk, the Russians say they attacked a meeting of NATO officers with Ukrainian officers, eight people killed and over 50 wounded in this attack. Pray for the people. Pray for the families. That's what we say every time, right? It's all we can do. We just got to pray. Pray for it. We have so many friends. This channel, this community has so many friends because of Brother Stas, who takes these videos and he puts a, a voice over, over these videos and they get, they're all over Ukraine and Russia. So we have many friends there. So all I, and I, and I don't know what's going on there, the bottom line. I know one thing. We have brothers and sisters in that part of the world that we need to pray for. And they comment a lot on these videos. It's really cool. From Insider Paper, Taiwan spotted two Russian warships off its eastern coast on Tuesday and sent its own aircraft and ships to keep watch, the island's defense ministry said. So it's really weird. Like, China and Russia have really become buddy-buddy. And uh, I think they're working together and planning together and... We'll see what happens. I know one thing. There's a lot of rumors of wars. The U.S. prompting world to turn away from dollar, the International Monetary Fund officials said. Washington has created conditions that force, force countries worldwide to search for alternatives to the U.S. dollar. Russia's representative at the International Monetary Fund, he told RIA on Monday. According to Oleski Mosin, more states are boosting the use of alternative 
currencies in cross-border transactions, in particular the Chinese Yuan. We can see that Iranians, Brazilians, and Saudis are already switching to trade in Yuan, uh, not only with China, but also with third countries, Mosin noted. He linked the greenback's longstanding dominance in the global economy to a lack of competition, as the dollar accounts for most international settlements and deposits worldwide. However, American officials are already sounding the alarm over the greenback's fate, Mosin claimed, due to what he described as the abandonment of the U.S. currency. Quote, it's clear that it will not happen at once, but the process has begun, he said. And how? How many countries have we read about in the past few months that are switching from the greenback, switching from U.S. dollars? And they're using other, they're using rubles or they're using the yuan, you know, the Chinese dollar. Incredible. Incredible. Probably not good for America, to be honest. The Jerusalem Post, the IDF, Israeli Defense Force, will run entirely on generative AI, artificial intelligence, within a few years, the Israeli cyber chief said. The entire Israeli military will run on generative AI within a few years. He said, I estimate... Within a few years, every area of warfare will be based on generative AI information. Without a strong and effective digital basis, no one will be able to prosecute a war in any area, said the IDF cyber chief. The major general stated, without a strong digital basis, we will not be able to manage large operations. Next, he said, in the modern battlefield, all of the tools from drones to tanks to sea vessels and others can transfer information to all of the other platforms and all of them will be interconnected. This is the vision of establishing a digital front for the battlefield. This will probably be technology of the Antichrist is gonna be the AI. I mean, we're all seeing it coming. I've never heard so much AI stuff. It's the stories every day, multiple, multiple, many times a day. You can find stories of AI and they never sound great. <laughs> they're, they're never like, you don't read it and go, oh, that's going to be, that's going to make my life better. It's always like, whoa, that's going to make people's lives worse. <laughs> We're not going to be here for a lot of it because I'm telling you that rapture is coming soon. All right. Hold on to that. I mean it. Chicago air quality is at unhealthy levels due to smoke from Canadian wildfires. Alerts in effect in Wisconsin and Indiana. Yeah, I saw some pictures of Chicago and it looks just yellow. It's like this golden yellow haze of smoke, much like New York was a few weeks ago. Incredible. All of a sudden, outbreaks of malaria, H5N1, swine flu, and monkeypox are all in the news. After a bit of a lull, it appears that the pestilences are going to start making headlines soon once again. Yeah. Seven-year tribulation's coming. All this stuff that we're seeing, the droughts in the United States and all over the world, the floods that are, it's always droughts or floods ruining the crops, one or the other. And it's just casting a shadow to the famine during the seven years, the pestilence during the seven years, the wars, the seven years are bad. They're really bad. It's the worst time to be alive since man was created. You don't want to be here for those seven years and they are speeding toward us like a bullet. Britain must prepare for harder lockdowns, says Matt Hancock. Health Secretary at time COVID hit, the government's pandemic strategy was woefully inadequate, he said. Britain must prepare for wider, earlier, and more stringent lockdowns in the face of future pandemics, he claimed. Control. Control. Going to be a lot of control during those seven years. We got a taste of it the last few years. It's going to be way worse. Anyone who tells you we're in the tribulation now is gravely mistaken. Yesterday, a magnitude 6.2 earthquake struck off of northern Japan. Uh, oh, ooh, listen to this one. Marco Rubio says he's heard shocking firsthand accounts of UFOs from top Pentagon officials who claim the U.S. has non-human craft in its possession. They're talking more and more about these UFOs, aren't they? 
they are setting it up. When we're raptured, that's going to be the big mothership grab the peeps. <laughs> the mothership grab, how come they're all Christians? And I don't know how they're going to, you know, people will say to me all the time, it's great you're making all these videos because during the seven years, people will watch this. I think it's going to be wiped clean quickly. But I think people have downloaded these videos. So I got a feeling that they might be circulated kind of underground. But just, you know, you know, it's easier. Believe in what Jesus did for you now. Okay. You don't want to be here for the seven years. Deadly floods ravaged southern Ghana, claiming at least eight lives. A colossal heat dome is literally baking much of our country here in the U.S., and this could cause widespread crop failures. Uh, it's been sitting over the region for quite some time. It doesn't appear that it will be moving much for at least several more days. There have been many areas where the heat index has already been up to around 120 degrees. In Rio Grande Village, the actual temperature was 119 on Friday. And forecasters are warning that the same reading would be reached again on Tuesday. This extreme heat has already caused several deaths and it could potentially cause widespread crop failures. Oh, listen to this. This is uh, under the category, things you never want to enter your body. Okay. First human trials begin for AI designed drug. Biotech firm in Silico Medicine said Monday that it entered an AI discovered and designed drug into phase two clinical trials involving human subjects. A first for the industry. Uh, no, thanks. I'll take water. <laughs> Can you imagine? Here's another one. This is a good one. We have less than two years before AI becomes a security problem we can no longer control. A member of parliament said. Writing in the House last week, Member of Parliament for Bournemouth East Tobias Elwood said, when an AI-controlled unmanned aerial vehicle killed its human handler in a simulated test, eliminating the operator for daring to interfere with its mission objectives, we should worry. But when Security Minister Tom Togenhat, a rare round peg that fits in a round hole, he warns us that AI is moving too fast for even the finest clerks in Parliament to regulate. Now we have a problem. So much talk about AI. That's why that's why I can't see the rapture being in two or three or four years. I just I just think this is moving too fast. And it's the perfect storm. And because everything we're told to look for is in play now, I just I can't see two or three years down the road. I think the rapture's way sooner. That's that's just my thoughts. I just can't see it any other way. I've tried. I've tried. I mean, you know, I want to get out of here, to be honest. You know, I want to. But you know me. I always tell you, I have a heart. I have a heart for the lost. I have the heart for, for the left behind. I don't want anyone to be left behind. I know many more will. But I don't, you know, as long as I'm here, I'm going to be yelling, turn to Jesus. All right, let's get to some comments of the day, shall we? This is from Brian Cardoza. And uh, this is a great comment. And it's because of your prayers that we can read this comment. Hi, Tom and River family. I tried posting yesterday about my wife's Uncle Henry, who has stage four cancer, but it got lost somewhere. In any case, God told me to go and pray with Henry. So I did. He is a thousand miles from me, and I went. Um, when I arrived at his room at the hospital, I said hello and told him God sent me to you. He began to cry. When I asked why he was crying, he told me that he had prayed and asked God for help to get right with him. Oh, my goodness. But didn't know how it all worked. God is so faithful. Well, I sat down, opened my Bible, and began to read the usual scriptures to which Henry listened intensely. As I came to the end of reading the scriptures, I paused for a moment and I asked Henry if he was ready to make Jesus the Lord of his life. And Henry answered, yes. We prayed a short prayer and praised God for his goodness in Henry's life and his salvation for Henry. And as we talked, I shared with Henry that the folks I connect with daily have been praying for him. 
Here's what he said. Tell everyone who has been praying for me, thank you for all your prayers. So I'm happy to report that there will be one more person for you to meet once we arrive in heaven. Family, thank you for your prayers and support. I could not have made this trip alone. And your assurance, I felt the entire trip as if you rode along with me. Jesus once again left the 99 to gather the one who needed to be brought home. All praise, honor, and glory to our King of Kings. What a great comment. This guy gets in his car. Brian gets in his car because he's got to go talk to Uncle Henry who has stage four cancer. Meanwhile, Uncle Henry's praying to God, I want to get right with you. I don't know how to do it. You got to send me somebody. <laughs> Brian walks in the door, reads some scriptures. Do you want that, Uncle Henry? I sure do. And we have another brother in the kingdom for eternity. Man, that, that's encouraging. Thank you so much, Brian, for sharing that one. GMADs. Don't you just feel in your soul that we are in the verge of going home? Yes. I think most of us do. There's something different. This year has been wild. It's just different. Different. God is preparing us. Ruthie. <clears throat> excuse me. Tom, so many people are in the dark, including many Christian folks. I'm just shocked how so many are unaware of what is happening. Thank you for telling us every day. I want and need that encouragement. I'm so done with this crazy world. I've checked out on it. And I'm so ready to go. So thank you, brother, for keeping us encouraged that Jesus will be here so, so soon. I can't wait. We're with you, Ruthie. We're, we're all with you. Mellow Marsh 77. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Have a wonderful day, family. Let's all try to remember that we are representatives of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, let them see you in us. God bless you all. That's a great reminder. That is a great my reminder, you know. When we walk around, and you know, we're not, we're not, uh, none of us are perfect, right? We're not perfect. So when I say these things, I know some people are going to say, oh, I'm not perfect. I'm not showing Christ every second of my life. They won't see him in me every second. We're human. We're in a broken world. We're in a broken world. But Jesus' spirit is indwelling in us. So it is a very good reminder to continually think, somebody is looking at me right now, and are they seeing Christ in me? It changes things you do. If you, if you get that mindset that people, you know, see, I run this channel, and I have a lot of followers. So it's on my mind a lot when I'm in public, when I'm in a restaurant, when I'm, you know, I think... What am I laughing at? What am I talking about? What am I doing? What if, you know, I want people to see Jesus in me? Because there's nothing more important than knowing Jesus. There's nothing more important than knowing Jesus. It's the greatest decision you're faced with in your entire life. Your greatest decision, greater than any other decision you'll ever make. Will I believe in the one who died for my sins? Or will I say, I don't really need that. I don't want to be religious. You know, I'm going to have to follow a ton of rules. I just don't need that. Or will you say, wait a minute. So wait, God sent his only begotten son to earth. And his purpose for coming here was just because he loved me and wanted to die for my sins willingly and shed blood. Like the one who spoke the worlds into existence, Jesus. Like he came here just because he loves me. Yeah, I want that. You should be that person. Because that's exactly what happened. And in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, it says, um, For I deliver to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried and he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. Christ died for us. He shed blood that is so perfect and beautiful and pure and that blood, that blood, don't ever leave the blood out of the, when you're talking to somebody about salvation, you got to talk about the blood. You have to, because it removes our sins, it takes our sins away from us as far as the East is from the West. And it washes us white as snow. Don't ever leave the blood out of the salvation message. I used to do that, you know, 
in a lot of the sinner's prayers that people will lead people and they don't mention the blood. I think it's very important to understand the power of the blood. I really do. I think it's a lost doctrine in a lot of Christianity today because it's almost offensive. It sounds violent and people are like, I don't really like talking about the blood. No, no, I love talking about the blood. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords shed blood on a cross for you and for me because it would wash us white as snow and remove our sin. And then, you know, we believe in Jesus' finished work, that he came to earth, he put on human flesh, because he had left heaven to come here, and he, he was perfect. He walked a perfect life. He was perfect. He was fully God, fully man. He never sinned one time. And then at the end of his ministry is when he got nailed to the cross and shed that blood. And when he died, his last words, it is finished because sin had been paid for. And then they buried him. Three days later, he rose again. He's coming back. He's the perfect savior. He's the perfect savior. You can have eternal life in heaven. Never, ever, ever, ever will it end. Just by believing in what I just talked about. Just by believing that the king of kings came to earth to die in your place. Because when we sin, for sin comes death. We die. The wages of sin is death. But Jesus gave us a gift, grace, an unearned gift. He laid his life down for us. He's the Lamb of God. He laid his life down. He spilled his blood. So that if we believe in the power of that blood and we believe in what Jesus did, we're saved. We're born again. The Spirit of God is put in us once you believe in that. And he'll never let you out of the palm of his hand once he grabs a hold of you. You're sealed unto the day of redemption. How beautiful is that? Romans 10, 9 and 10. <clears throat> if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Believing in what he did and the power of that blood. You're with him forever. And and I got to always tell you the flip side of the coin. I don't like telling you this. I hate this part. But you know what? As true as what that truth I just gave you, there's a flip side to the coin that's just as true. And that's if, if you're the one saying, I don't believe in Jesus. I don't believe he ever existed. Or he was some guy who got crucified. He didn't rise again. He's not God. Or I don't need that. I, I know about him. I, I believe in him. But I don't, I don't want to be a Bible bank. I don't need a personal relationship with him. I don't need any of this. You're going to end up being led to hell. You're going to, the judgment day is going to come. You're going to be face to face with Jesus and your sins are going to be there still. See, I'm no better than you are, but my sins were placed on Jesus on the cross. And I believe they were placed on him. And I believe when he shed that blood and erased my sins, past, present, and future, they're gone. They're gone. But if you show up and you don't believe the way I do, because I can't brag about it, Jesus did it all. But if you show up on Judgment Day and you're like, I don't need that. I don't want that religion. I, I just don't need payment for my sins. Your sins are still there. And Jesus is going to look and say, away from me. You're going to be led to hell and you're not going to say you're unfair. You're going to say, I heard about this. I remember hearing about this and I rejected it. You're a fair and just God. You don't want to do that. It's not a party. Hell is not a party. It's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. And it's hotter than Florida in the summer. It's bad. So turn to Jesus today. You don't have much time. It's time to turn to Jesus because that rapture is coming soon. All right. That's what I got for you. I'm going to shut the camera off and I'm going to pray for every single person who watches this video. I do this every day. I think it's important. And if we're not raptured today, and I got to tell you today, I think today is a perfectly good day for the rapture, but... If, if Jesus isn't ready yet because he wants to get some more brothers and sisters for us, then I will be here, God willing, tomorrow. I love you guys.